In this video, we will be completing example two. It says the following table represents a sample of 15 students. Each student recorded the number of hours they studied for an exam as well as their marks. So when we look at this table, we can see we have study time on the top row and a student who did zero hours of study received an exam mark of 5%. So zero hours of study means a low mark of 5%. Another student did 18 hours of study and got a high mark of 95%. For question A, it wants us to construct a scatter plot by plotting the points on the number plane at right. So we'll do one column at a time, starting with the first column. Zero hours lines up with an exam mark of 5%. We'll put the point here. And looking at the next column, 18 hours lines up with an exam mark of 95%. We'll do one more column. Five hours of study lines up with an exam mark of 80%. I'm going to pause and finish this and I'd like you to do it with me. We'll now move on to question B which says what is the scale for the vertical axis? Now the vertical axis is the axis that goes directly up and we've just got to figure out what are the numbers going up by each time and we know that this number here is is 10 so the numbers are going up by 10 each time 0 10 20 and we'll write that here for question B the scale is 10 and to be more specific we'll say 10 percent because they are going up by 10 percent each time all right we've got some more questions to look at uh, we have question C which says how many students got a mark greater than 60 percent and if we just look at where 60 percent is this is the point here so it's everyone that's got a mark greater than that or above this line. We've got one mark which is exactly the same as 60%, but not greater than 60%. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight students that got greater than 60%. All right, now moving on to question D, it says how many students completed less than eight hours of study in preparation for the exam? So eight hours is this point here, and we're looking for students that did less than this, meaning students to the left of that green line. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight students did less than eight hours of study. We'll now move on to question E. According to this data, would you say there is a strong correlation between a person's study time and exam mark? Why? Now, when we look at our scatter plot, we can see that there is a definite trend going on here. The trend being that as you put in more study time, your exam mark seems to increase. So, for question E, we can say yes, there's definitely a correlation. And we'll say that as you put in more study time, your exam mark tends to increase. Now moving on to question F, it says, what do you notice about the shape of the scatter plot? I would say that this has a shape that is curved and not linear. I'm going to put it here. We can see the trend going quite steep, and then as you get into your higher marks, it starts to flatten off. So for my shape, I'm going to say a curve and also that it's non-linear. All right, moving on to our last question, question G. Were there any students that seemed to lie outside the normal trend when comparing students' study time to their exam mark? I would definitely say that this student seems to lie outside the trend. So we'll say, yes, the student that did zero hours of study and got a mark of 35%. You might also regard these students as lying outside the trend as well. Anyway, that concludes example two. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.